we now move on to preview group e of the european championships which is uh comprised of belgium romania slovakia and ukraine um uh, you know, this is in my opinion, probably, you know, one of the uh, the weaker groups at this uh, at this European Championship. You have two teams that are ranked out of the top forty um, at this European Championship uh, with Romania and Slovakia. Uh, you got a Ukraine team that is, um, you know, has. Some quality in there with, uh, you know, the obvious names, Mudrich, Sinchenko, Sinchenko uh, uh, Adolf Beek, uh, you know, there's, there's some quality there. And um, on the Slovakia team and Romania team, you know, that's a little bit on the weaker side. Now, let's start off with Belgium. You know, Belgium, they completely eased their way through qualification they finished top of their group they won six games and they drew only two they went unbeaten finishing 20 points and um now they have um in um they've been they were just completely dominant Roma Lukaku was actually the top scorer at qualifier she scored 14 goals in only eight matches which is phenomenal um and you know he has a chance to um, really break history at this European Championship. He only needs two goals to reach um, the top three goal scorers in Euro's history. Now, this is a Belgium team that's kind of, you know, a sleeper team. When you consider the fact that they're not really, you know, it's there's this perceived notion that they're past their pest, which, you know, they don't have the likes of Eden Hazard and that crew, that golden generation. But this is a team that can be slimmed on. Number one, this is a midfield that's revitalized with Tielemans, Onana, De Bruyne, and my opinion, a brilliant midfield. And then you have Lukaku, who's also revitalized, who's go scoring goals at a great at great uh, time playing good football in Italy now yet, yet again and playing great football for Belgium. You got wingers in Jeremy Doku and Leander Trossard that have the ability. You get the direct nature of Jeremy Doku that can get past, drive past player and open up space for teammates. You got a Trossard who's a goal scoring head threat. He can be a good option. He's also vertical as well. And, you know, it's a very solid team. I think that midfield and attack is a very strong point of the team. Now, defensively, you know, this team has been aging defensively and they've, you know, did a little bit of a of a revamp. Now, they do still rely on the likes of a Thomas Munier and a and a um, and uh, a Jan Vintongen, which is a little bit uh, concerning, but, you know, they've, you know, helped in their last... Um, uh, six games, they've held five teams scoreless. So that's a very good achievement. That's a good achievement. Um, in the Euro qualifiers, they in they only conceded uh four goals and that whole in eight games, which is very it's a very good defensive record. So for me, Belgium is a team that can be slumped on. With Domenico Teodesco, who's came in and revitalized this team, uh, giving some, giving them a little bit something different with the Belgium head coach for the Belgium national team. Um, he, you know, he's had some few shaky moments, maybe the, the, you know, the Courtois situation and all that. But this is a team that looks tight. They look together. They know what they're. They know, um, you know, they know they're not the favorites no more. But they still have brilliant players. They still have ability. They still got new guys coming up and I'm very very impressed with them and I think they will be a deadly team at this European Championship because of the lack of expectations I really expect them if they were able to go into a quarter final and potentially have to face off against a team like England I think they will definitely fancy their chances because they'll go into that game as an underdog all the pressure will be on England and when you're going into a game as an underdog no pressure on you and you got the likes of Kevin De Bruyne and Romelu Lukaku and Leandro Trossard and Jeremy Doku and Tielemans and Onana, man, I, 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 they're a team that cannot be slumped on. And they really, I have, you know, I have huge, huge, uh, not expectations, but I, I do have some expectations of this team. This team is being completely slumped on, in my opinion. 
Slovakia or Ukraine, uh, Ukraine national team, they're uh, a, a national team, obviously, you know, politically wise, they've gone through a lot of, you know, major issues um, regarding, uh, you know, the war and all that and all that. But um, Ukraine, number one, by the way, this is their fourth consecutive appearance at the European Championship. They finished in the quarterfinals at the last European Championship after did finishing third place. But they did go into Scotland and they beat or they went to Scotland and they beat, uh, uh, I believe it was, who they beat in that round of 16? Uh, they beat Sweden in the round of 16 of, in my opinion, a very good Sweden team. And, you know, and they moved on to the quarterfinal where they did get walloped by England. Um, now, now they are, they have a very good chance, in my opinion, of qualifying. I think they have the second most talented team in this. They did not have the best qualifiers. They needed the playoffs to get through. They, they missed out on automatic qualification. Um, with Italy finishing second in that group now there was you know there was some controversy regarding that but you know they were still able to get through through the to through the playoffs by um by defeating I forgot who they defeated actually I believe they defeated yeah it was Iceland yeah so after defeating Iceland uh with a you know a game winning goal by Mikhailo Mudrik in the 84th minute they move on and this is also Mikhailo Mudrik that plays very good for his country his direct nature his verticality I think he's primed to have a breakout European championship for this team and don't sleep on their chances I think they are the second most talented team in this group Dolph Bick um, he's had a good season this season in La Liga um, uh, he has a um, He's a very, very good striker. He was leading the line for them at the last European Championship. Uh, so don't sleep on him. What he did this season at Girona, scoring 24 goals and 8 assists in 36 matches. I think he's a deadly player. He's going to be leading the line for this Ukrainian national team. So do not sleep on that team to, um, you know, to get out of this group now. I don't think they'll go much farther than getting out of this group, but I think they have a good chance to get out. Now, Romania is a team that uh, uh, they they don't have many players that we would know. Uh, they do have a strong defense with their center backs Rodu Drasugusin, who plays at Tottenham, and Andre Burka. Uh, they played all ten games in qualifiers, and they had a good defensive record against them. Um, so defensively, they're strong. Um, you know, they open up the tournament against Ukraine, which is a huge, huge game for them. And, you know, will really decide, you know, can really decide who might, might qualify out of that group. Um, Romania, they did, you know, they moved on to the European Championship by getting passed in a group with the likes of Switzerland, Israel, Belarus, Kosovo, Andorra. They actually won that group ahead of Switzerland. Um, a Switzerland team that had, does have huge respect for them. They finished unbeaten in that group. And, you know, I, you know they do have Radu Dragusin, uh, Ianis Haji from uh, 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 Deportivo Alves, uh, Florian Conan from uh, FC... Um, FCBC, FCSB, FC Studu, Bucharesti, um, in Bucharest, you know, pl players that are not the most, you know, famous of players, uh, Nicolas Tanku from Damak FC, you know, I don't see this team being much of a threat to Ukraine, but the way that they're able to defend is very, very impressive, and they're managed by uh, by Edward Irodnasco, who's made it very, um, who's made them very hard to play against, and I think that will give them a chance in this European Championship. Now, the final uh, team to discuss is Slovakia, who take on Belgium in their first game, and you know. 
they're managed by Francesco Calzona and you know they're the most likely team in my opinion to finish bottom I think they you know they have a little bit less talent than the Romanian national team they did win seven games in the qualifying year 2024 which is very very impressive but uh, there was not much competition that they faced besides Portugal and now they're going up in a group B with very good teams and you know they do have a chance to get caught out now a side note this is a uh, Jan Oblak's first major game at an international major competition, so it's heartwarming experience that's going to be for him. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, so that's an amazing, oh no, no, that's Slovenia, Slovakia, my bad, Slovakia, Slovakia's goalkeeper is Dubravka, but, um, but uh, as I was saying, this is a Slovakian national team that is going away from the likes of Amir Kamsic and now led by um, led by uh, Skriniar who's still going to be a, a major contributor for this team he's really the heart of their defense and again they're a team they're going to rely on their defensive knack in this sort of in this tournament and again in my opinion this is the weakest group at this European Championship, and again, I don't see them really being a threat. I think this is this group is the major contending group, in my opinion, to not have a third place team go on. I think Romania and Slovakia are not in the class of a team to get into that. So, so I'll say those two teams will get eliminated. I think Belgium will be comfortable. They'll win this group. They'll cruise by this group. They'll be resting players in their final game. That's how comfortable they'll be. And I think Ukraine will be the second place team to move on. And, you know, I think it's going to come down to... Actually, I don't think Belgium will rest their players because I, I think that last game between Belgium and Ukraine will probably decide who wins that group, which is an important to determine, you know, who they face in the knockout stages and all that. That'll be a very, very important game. I look for that to be one of the, you know, big games of this group stages. That'll be in Stuttgart Arena in front of 54,000 people. So, you know, we all look forward to that.